Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's October 2011, and I'm going to begin my lecture series on using ZMAX. Uh, I've decided to start a little bit early because of the response I've been getting. So the goal for this class is just to provide an understanding of the basic ZMAX interface. Now I want to put some caveats here. This is a quote from one of my former bosses, uh, Paul Manhart from NASA Langley. Running ZMAX does not make you an optics expert. Uh, it's not, you know, optical design and analysis is not about running ZMAX. It's a tool to help you analyze optical systems. So you need to know optics before you can effectively use ZMAX. There's a lot of pitfalls and sometimes you don't know what to look out for. And uh, Paul's of the opinion you should take classes and learn from the experts while slowly coming up to speed. So I'm going to ignore that and you know, arm, you know, give you enough information to make you dangerous with ZMAX. I still encourage you to go to school, go to colleges, take these classes from ZMAX Corporation or Radiant ZMAX. They're really great. I'm just trying to give you a basic understanding for how to turn ZMAX on and do some simple analysis. So let's begin. There's two types of modes ZMAX works in, sequential and non-sequential. So in sequential, you go surface by surface by surface by surface by surface. Very easy, not intensive on the computer or the processor. As opposed to sequential, where you, you enter a bunch of surfaces, and they can be in any order. And in this case, this surface here, it might be the fifth surface you enter, but it gets interacted on reflection and then again on refraction here. And ZMAX determines the order of the operations. Again, that's non-sequential. Sequential is what we're going to be talking about primarily, and you tell it what surfaces to go through. How does that work? There's the Lens Data Editor, or the LDE, and it's essentially a spreadsheet. And uh, it shows, uh, first column is what sort of surface type it is. This is a standard, just a simple radius. Um, simple radius here, thickness, glass, and your diameter. And so you, here's a Cook triplet, pulled from ZMAX's uh, uh, samples. Radius 1, surface 1 here, so that's described by this. It's a standard surface. Its radius is 22. Again, this is a Cartesian. You've got to be careful of sign convention. Cartesian coordinate system, so it's convex in this case. It's 3.2 and a bunch of numbers in thickness. And then uh, it's the glass is SK16. That's this media here. We've set the aperture. This is a semi-diameter, so from the optical axis out to the edge is 9.5 millimeters. This shows all, you know, and you go through all the different surfaces to get you your optical prescription. So when you fire up ZMAX, and I've hiked this from the web, ZMAX has a really cool uh, knowledge base for getting you started in ZMAX. I highly recommend you look it up. Here's a link here. When you fire it up, you're going to have the LDE. It's this red box right here. There's the main menu bar, file through help. You've got a bunch of button bars, new, save, save as, update, layout, glass selection, etc., etc. That's the lens data editor. So, how do you access the editors? In some cases, your lens data editor won't be there. So, you can just go click on editors, lens data, lens data editor, and there's a whole bunch of other editors here. We're not going to cover those today. But what's cool is it shows you the, the hotkey for going and getting this. Shift F1 will pull your lens data editor up. Let's insert a paraxial lens on surface one. So you, and I'll pull up ZMAX here shortly and do this. You're, uh, we're gonna have a dummy surface on surface one. Surface two, we're gonna, we're gonna double click right here. You're gonna get the surface two property box. And the surface type, you're gonna scroll down to paraxial. And again, that's accessed by double clicking here and you set the focal length further down by setting it to 100. Then you need to set the system aperture. So whether it's a, an entrance pupil or float by stop size, I'll have another video later that describes all the entries in this particular box because it's very important how you set up your optical system. This is accessed by hitting the general button here or control G will do the same thing. Uh, in this case, 
this surface two, see it goes object, surface one, surface two. Surface two says STO. This is your aperture stop. Let's say your aperture stop was on one and you wanted to make it surface two. You double click here on the paraxial and you click this box here to say make it your stop. Now it's grayed out because it's already your aperture stop. So and we're setting the system aperture. In this case we're going to set it to entrance pupil diameter. So we're going to say it's a five millimeter entrance pupil diameter. You can see the semi aperture automatically sets it to two and a half. So you select the entrance pupil and put it, uh, give it a value of five. And finally, this is the last slide I'm going to be going over today, your status bar at the bottom. And these are the defaults, your focal length, your system focal length, your working F number, we'll be talking about F number and working F number a little later. Magnification, it's really P mag, paraxial magnification. It's got an infinite conjugate, so really your magnification is zero. Your total track, which is the length of the whole system, not including, uh, um, not including the object distance. So homework is construct the first order microscope in ZMAX using paraxial lenses, no eyepieces, uh, just infinity corrected with a 200 millimeter tube. So you're gonna have a tube lens, paraxial lens is a tu tube lens, and then a, you're gonna design an objective. Again, it's a paraxial lens. Let's jump over to ZMAX, that's here. So this is what it looks like when you fire it up. Let's say you fire it up and you don't have your lens data editor. Again, you go to editors, you hit lens data, or you could hit shift F F1. Now let me open this up. Uh, let's just insert. I'm going to hit the insert key on the keyboard. We're going to make this our paraxial lens. I double click the standard. We're going to go paraxial. Or likewise, you could do standard and just hit P. It goes right to paraxial. Now I want this to be my aperture stop. So we're going to say make surface stop. I'm going to clean this up. I get a little kind of retentive here on what this stuff looks like. We don't use this. I'm going to hide it. So we're going to go here and have a nice clean lens. 100 millimeter focal length. Now let's draw. I'm going to go out of order in what I presented earlier. I'm going to draw it. Now, so where's my lens? Well, the issue is there's no thickness. So you've got an uh, infinity obje uh, object and we're just going to set the image distance to 100. Okay, and I, I update it. So you can either update by clicking this update button or double clicking in this spot. Again, it's a line, you know, what's going on? Remember this general key. We have to hit the, the, the general key. The entrance pupil diameter, diameter is defaulted to zero. So it's got no entrance pupil. So we're gonna keep it entrance pupil diameter. We're going to call it, in this case, I'm gonna do 50, make it an F2 system. And voila, you've got your lens. Uh, now I like to see more rays. Oh, again, so when you got any of these uh, ZMAX boxes, you could click settings here, or you just right click in this space. And in this case, I'm going to add seven rays across the pupil. There is your lens. That's pretty much it. That's how you enter a paraxial lens in ZMAX. Again, this is Scott Sparrow from Optics Realm. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call me, scott.sparrow at gmail.com. I love feedback and I love questions on ZMAX. And uh, there's going to be a lot of video entries in this because ZMAX is a very rich and complicated and there's a lot you can mess up. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun to model this stuff. Have a good one.